Hey everybody, welcome to Wonder Wednesday. I'm gonna try to sit down a little bit more here. Okay, uh, welcome to Wonder Wednesday. I'm Tara, I come to you live every Wednesday at 1.15. I think it might be like 1.17 right now, so sorry if I'm two minutes late. Um, just got my son down for a nap and ran down here to talk to you guys. So um, I come to you live every Wednesday. Hi Steph, thanks for joining, um, to talk to you guys about health and fun stuff. And I figured this week I wanted to talk about the microbiome because it is our hot topic of the week inside my private Facebook community. Um, that is Lean In with Tara Allen Health. I will talk to you guys at the end of this video about it some more. Um, but that's what we're doing inside the, the um, group for this week. We're talking about the microbiome, we're talking about probiotics, how to get more of that in your diet, um, what it's even good for, and sharing recipes and stuff like that. So let's start out by talking what is the microbiome. You might have heard this word being used more and more and more, and you're only going to hear so much more of it. Um, this is an area that is being researched very heavily right now. Um, there's already so much that we do know and there's so much more that we don't know yet. So um, just stay tuned over the next five or 10 years. I really expect that this topic will just grow bigger and bigger. So the microbiome is also known as um, your gut, your gut health. Hey Ange, thanks for watching. Um, so, it's basically the ecosystem that's inside your body, inside your GI tract, which is also known as your gastrointestinal tract. So these are the bacteria, um, fungi, viruses, everything that live inside our body that's meant to be there, right? We're not meant to have a sterile GI tract. That wouldn't be good for any of us. Um, it's also why you might have heard some research lately about um, C-sections versus vaginal deliveries and how, um, by the way, if you get grossed out pretty easily, this video is not going to be for you, <laughs> just a little heads up. Um, so why they talk about seeding now with um, C-sections, C-section babies. So if a baby has to be born via a C-section, um, they are now recommending that they actually cover the baby with some of the mom's um, uh, bacteria from her vagina because that's where babies are supposed to come through, right? Um, and so it's thought of that it helps them early on in life kind of um, get some of those good friendly bacteria inside their bodies instead of just the hospital bacteria that they would normally pick up on if they didn't have that done. So it's called seeding. You can look it up, um, like planting a seed. So Anyway, this is one of the reasons that it's such a hot topic because they're studying everything related to how you were born and what your environment was like and um, you know how many rounds of antibiotics have you taken. I think most of us can say safely that we have probably taken way too many antibiotics. Um, if you're over the age of, I don't know, 10, <laughs> you grew up in a time where antibiotics were prescribed for everything, the little cold or cough or whatever, we just thought that antibiotics should be taken all the time, most people. Some people, um, the rare exception, had parents that were maybe a little bit more hippie-ish and um, maybe they escaped some of these rounds of antibiotics. So kudos to them. So let's talk about what the microbiome is anyway, right? So it's this ecosystem inside of you. It's trillions and trillions and trillions of these bugs inside of you. So technically you are made of more of these other guys, these bugs, than you are of your own DNA. There's more of them than there are of us, okay? Um, so you could start to think about the, the vastness of it, how, how big this microbiome is, and possibly the importance of it as well. Why were we designed to have colonies of all of these different things inside of us? Um, so let's talk about what it's linked to. So having a very healthy and diverse microbiome is linked to great health and longevity. So all the things that we want, um, you know, the weight management, having a healthy weight and, um, you know, being absent of disease, all those things are linked to. So that's not the same thing as saying they're caused by or they cause. I'm just saying these things tend to be linked together. Um, so if you don't have a diverse microbiome, um, they are now starting to link that to things like autoimmune diseases, all different kinds, um, fertility and hormonal imbalances, fertility problems and hormonal imbalances, um, brain, cognitive and behavioral disorders, 
mood disorders like depression and anxiety, um, cancer and fatigue and joint pain, um, learning disabilities, weight management or possibly um, unexplained or unintended weight gain can be linked to having a microbiome that's um, a little out of whack. And even things like allergies, eczema, um, psoriasis, so all those types of things can be related to your microbiome too. So what kinds of things, let's talk about what you can avoid to help out your own microbiome and then let's talk about things to include more of because that's more fun anyway. So avoiding the things that um, will cause an imbalance in your microbiome such as, it's all the things that we want you avoiding anyway, right? This is no brainer, it's the sugar, the refined oils, um, like the refined, specifically the refined vegetable oils, the dairy and the gluten. So I'm not saying that nobody should ever have any dairy or any gluten ever, but I am saying that if you have some sort of issues going on and you're trying to rebalance your gut, your microbiome, one area you might wanna look into is considering to remove dairy and gluten at least for a short period of time, maybe a moderate period of time, maybe a longer period of time, but just consider that. Um, you, wanna, you wanna remove refined and um, highly processed carbs, okay? So your too many breads, crackers, packaged foods, things like that are going to lead to you not having such a diversified microbiome. Because what happens is you're feeding the bad guys in there and those will go on to wipe out some of the good guys. You want that healthy balance. If you think about your microbiome almost like a rainforest, you, you want different types of trees, different populations of animals. You kind of want it to be this very um, lush place, right? I know it's kind of weird. We're talking about your insides here, but you want it to have all this diversity and you don't want any one thing or one species or one population to be taking over everything. But what these things that I'm talking about, these foods are doing is actually wiping out some of the good guys and letting some of the bad guys take over. Um, which leads to a lot of the problems I was just talking about. So, okay, so you're taking that stuff out, you're taking out a lot of the conventional meat, and if you do do dairy, um, do do dairy, that's funny, um, you want to go with organic meat and organic dairy, definitely, if you're doing those products. Um, a lot of people will then say, but it's so expensive. And you know what, yes, if you compare it to conventionally grown meat, it is very expensive. But here's what I say, if you're on a tight budget, you can simply do the meat less often and just buy the higher quality stuff. So if you were eating conventional meat, let's say six nights a week, and you wanna go organic, maybe have meat now three nights a week instead, but get the higher quality stuff, okay? It's all about the quality, not about the quantity. Um, most of us that are here on Facebook and on our phones and everything, we're not, most of us are not worried about getting enough food, but it, we are worried about getting enough quality food. So look at what you can do to kind of finagle the system and go with the higher quality stuff. Um, all right, and trans fats, you want to avoid trans fats. So that's the, the fats that are man-made. So they were liquid at room temperature and then um, in a lab they were basically changed the chemistry was changed to make it solid at room temperature um, and the reason they do that is because it increases the shelf life of products so these these are the things that are packaged the cookies cake you know a lot of crackers chips that type of thing packaged foods um, that have trans fats you can look for the term hydrogenated oil or partially hydrogenated oil. Because even right now, the labels do have to include trans fats on um, the nutrition facts, but there's like a little loophole and they can get away with it by having under 0.5 grams of trans fat, they can still call it zero. But if you look in the ingredients and it says hydrogenated oil or partially hydro hydrogenated oil, um, then you know that it actually does have some trans fats. We wanna avoid trans fats like at all costs. Um, this is not the type of thing that it's like okay in moderation, we want none of it. Okay, and antibiotics. Um, antibiotics, they're great. Sometimes we need them. Um, most of the time that we're prescribed them, we don't need them. So just, I'm not gonna tell you if you need them or not, go to your doctor, speak to them, ask the questions, and make sure that you're not taking antibiotics for something that is most likely a virus. Um, or even just a lot of times it's given preventatively, and sometimes I, I see the 
purpose for that, right? I used to work in a hospital. Um, but don't do that when, you know, if you have a feeling in your gut like you probably don't need the antibiotics, just question it. Ask your doctor and hopefully you have a doctor that you feel comfortable with or a healthcare um, practitioner and you can just have the conversation back and forth and then make your decision after that. So antibiotics, try to keep it to a limited amount. Now, let's talk about the fun stuff. What should you include more of? What is going to help your microbiome flourish and really diversify and, you know, be that rainforest that we all want? Um, stress management. Womp womp. Yep, stress management. It's a big one because a lot of the hormonal actions that happen when we're stressed out all the time will actually kill off some of the good bacteria um, and good microbes in our, in our gut. So you want to try to get your stress managed. You can't really reduce it. I mean, you can reduce it. You can't eliminate it, right? We're all going to have stress, but see if you can come up with something that works for you, whether it's yoga, meditation, journaling, going for a walk out in nature, um, spending 10 minutes to truly put everything aside and get down on the floor with your kids and laugh with them. Um, find something that works for you that you notice, oh yeah, I feel so much better after I do whatever. And just make that part of your everyday. Um, exercise. Exercise for so many reasons helps the microbiome as well. So make sure you're getting some regular exercise. Um, ideally, you're getting planned exercise like workouts. You know, you're lifting weights or you're doing lunges, something like that. And also the movement throughout the day. So you're going for walks. Um, you're st you know you're cleaning your house. You're walking around, whatever. That you're not just sitting still all the time. If you have an office job, try to make it a point to get up every hour or so and you know walk to the bathroom or talk to your coworker instead of sending them an email if they're just around the corner. Just try to get yourself moving. That's going to help as well. Um, Omega threes is really helpful for your microbiome. So whether you take that in supplement form, um, fish oil or algae. Um, you can do it by having some fish. Salmon is good for omega-3s. Um, if you are a vegetarian or you want to do more plant-based, you can do walnuts and flax seeds. Those have omega-3s also. Probiotics. So everyone always asks me my um, favorite brand for probiotics. And my response is always this, what's more important than the brand that you choose, although of course you do want to choose a quality brand for any supplements that you take, but what's more important is that you are um, rotating what you're taking. So every brand and type of probiotic has a propri proprietary uh, blend. That is really not easy to say. Um, proprietary. Okay, so what you want to do basically is when you're done with your one box or bottle or something, go to a different brand because this way you're switching it up. What you don't want is to get the same, let's say, three strains and just keep pumping your guts full of the same strains over and over and over. And that's great, you're building that up, but you're not really paying attention to the rest of the species and the population in your guts. So remember I said it's like a rainforest, you've got all these different things, you wanna build up a variety of them. So just rotate your probiotics, that's my best tip for that. Um, prebiotics, so what happens when you've got the, the probiotics, these are the good guys inside of you, right? How do you keep them around? How do you get them to stick around? Prebiotics are a certain type of fiber that basically acts like food for the probiotics. So once they're there, you need to feed them so that they stick around. So this is a lot of the dietary fiber that you eat. It's one of the reasons that eating fiber is very important in your diet. Um, some real stars that jump out, um, onions, garlic, asparagus, artichoke. Um, these are really, really good for your gut bacteria as well. Um, and then plenty of your vitamins. So whether you eat like a rock star or you're taking a supplement or both, I don't care what it is, but you need enough, definitely enough of C, D, and E to help your microbiome also. The B vitamins are pretty important too because they help you extract the energy along with the bacteria out of your food. So the bacteria, the, the microbiome helps you to break down your food actually and get more energy out of it. Um, so they're really helpful for us if we've got a good amount of them. And then you, you want to stick to an anti-inflammatory diet. So I told you what to take out, but here's what to add in. You want to have lots and lots and lots of antioxidant foods like veggies and fruits in there um, because that will help you to reduce the oxidative stress, whatever's going on inside of you. And um, that oxidative stress is what leads to the gut damage anyway. 
you might have heard of leaky gut syndrome before. Um, it's basically when your intestinal walls become too permeable. So let's say they're normally like this and there's like little, little, see, I can see you, there's little gaps between and they're supposed to let in little particles. Certain things that we do or eat or um, are exposed to in the environment will actually make that gut more permeable. You'll have bigger holes like this and bigger particles of food will slip through that aren't supposed to. So when that happens, your body will attack it because it doesn't want those bigger pieces of food, let's just say, bigger molecules circulating in our blood. So your body will build up its defense and attack those. And then you'll become sensitive to that food because now it's going to always attack that. Gluten is one of the things that will increase intestinal, intestinal permeability for everybody for a period of time after you eat it. So this is one of those things. I myself am actually sensitive to gluten, so I really can't do it, right? So you've got people that have celiac disease, you've got people who are sensitive to gluten, um, and then there's everybody else who maybe can do it sometimes, but what you have to keep in mind is that even you, every single person, when you eat your gluten, it opens up your intestinal walls a little bit. So now, things that you eat along with that, you might start to become sensitive to. So just be aware of that. Um, so, okay, so that's when I, when I say gut damage, that's what I'm talking about. So a lot of people have this whole protocol they have to go through where they have to seal the gut a little bit more and then build up their microbiome to get everything back in balance. Um, so you wanna have foods that are high in antioxidants to help to reduce that oxidative stress that was going on inside your gut. Um, and it also helps to turn down an, over, an overreactive immune system. So if you've got one of these immune systems that's just like ready for a fight all the time, um, the antioxidant foods, your you know, rainbow of colors of fruits and veggies are going to help you turn down that immune system, like take a chill pill. Um, and it also supports all your healthy cells too. So you're not worrying about causing damage to the cells that are doing the right thing anyway. So that's all I have for you guys today. Um, I know it could be a lot. I wanted to keep it kind of short because it could be a lot of information, especially if you hadn't heard of the microbiome biome and all the various things about it. Um, so if you have any questions, feel free to type them in the comments. I would love to come back and help answer your questions. And if you want to learn more about your gut health and see some good recipes, I posted a recipe today that's really good for your microbiome, um, join the group. I'm going to post a link in the comments. It's just a Facebook group. Um, we're a bunch of women just looking to make better healthy choices for ourselves and for our families. So it's very friendly. Come on over. Um, and stick around if you are finding some value in there. Other than that, I hope you guys have a great day, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.